G'day and welcome back to the Aussie Shed. Today, the lathe bed goes up against its arch enemy, the Michitoyo micrometer, where we find out exactly what's going on. First off, I've taken measurements of the lathe bed as best as I could to determine where I'm working from. And from what I've discovered is the ground surface on the top of the lathe here is really really flat which makes sense it's it's been ground but all of the milled surfaces are not so flat the underside of the uh, front way here is milled and the underside of the rear way is also milled and there are obvious discrepancies right out of the gate on the rear way we start off with a thickness of 9.15 center nine point two two And on the end, 9.24. So, as you can see, it's getting thicker as it moves along. Which is a problem, because um, as you tighten up the back plate on the carriage, um, it will, if you tighten it to the thickness of this end, as you slide up, it's going to get tight and it won't want to move. So you'll have to loosen it so that it'll slide up all the way here which will be great, but then as soon as you move it back, it'll be loose. And if it's loose, it's going to move. And that is no good. So, let's measure the front way and see what's going on. Thirteen point three seven. Thirteen point one eight. Thirteen point two one. So we've got the opposite problem on this side. It's fatter down this end and thinner up this end. Well, that really sucks because that's got to be fixed. <clears throat> the way this is running, there's, uh, there's, there's no way the carriage assembly is going to be able to slide smoothly. It's, it's going to be, you know, the, the front plate's going to be tight down this end, the rear plate will be tight at this end, and everywhere in between, it's going to be loose and it's going to move. Uh, and that's just going to be really crap as far as trying to machine stuff. If you've got movement in the carriage assembly it's just going to lead to really really shitty work so we've got to fix that and the only way to do that is by lapping it uh, which means going through a process of setting up abrasive paper mounted on the uh, the the top side of the front plate and the back plate and tension down the the front and back plates and use a bit of lubricant and just start lapping along and lapping the undersides of these sections so a lot of lapping will happen along the the rear of this front edge and a lot of lapping is going to happen along the uh the this area here on the on the back edge and it's going to be a lot of work because mate this lathe bed is hard as nails. It is really, really tough. Uh, so I imagine there is hours upon hours upon hours of work in lapping to get these, um, these ways parallel. I'll just grab the carriage here. There's also an issue with the, car the carriage isn't running parallel to the top of the lathe bed. It's actually 
uh, low at the back and so that means that once the uh, the cross slides mounted on the on the on the saddle as you turn it it'll be going downhill like like so uh, and also if i try to uh, say mount the back plate and then lap the underside of this back way it'll actually be lapping it um, on an angle like this so in order to be able to to lap the underside flat we first need to to get the uh, the saddle flat which means we're going to have to uh, grind out this this 90 degree V in the uh, the front edge of the um, of this front way uh, passageway in the in the underside of the saddle so I'll probably just run a mill down through the center and enlarge that that hole and then uh, mount some emery paper on both sides of this uh, of the way here cut those to the right size just put some spray adhesive on them and mount them taking care to um, to sit the the saddle parallel to the bed using a, uh, a height indicator uh, and then just start lapping this and and taking that in deeper until this is parallel there's also the the ground surfaces on the saddle seem to be quite good I've checked this distance with the micrometer from the ground surface on the top to the underside of the saddle which sits up against the way and they're parallel front to back um, so it appears that all the ground surfaces are really good but the problem is the ground surfaces generally only appear on one side of everything and it's not necessarily the mating side so ground surface milled surface ground surface milled surface and all the milled surfaces are really average as far as their accuracy goes. We've got, we've then got problems. Your cross slide goes on, and once again, all these milled, sur uh, all these ground surfaces seem really parallel and really, really nice tight tolerances across these dimensions, across the sides. It's really, really nice. But then, um, this ground surface here sits against a milled surface on the top of the saddle and this milled surface on the top of the saddle is out of parallel with the ground surface on the uh, the outer edge of the top of the saddle which is the parallel surface to the lathe bed or it will be once that's been ground so basically everything needs lapping there is not one component that doesn't need lapping um, Every piece that gets mounted on top of this, the cross slide, it all needs to be lapped. It all suffers from the same problems of um, uneven milling, which means nothing run, nothing will run true. So unless you go through the process of uh, of, of checking every single dimension uh, on these mini lathes, there's no saying that you're going to get any kind of accuracy out of your work. This seems to be where the lion's share of all the work is going to be in setting up the mini lathe um, so yeah lots and lots and lots of lapping there's also modifications that I will be doing along the way as far as uh, strengthening up making new back plate and a new front plate I've already got those kind of roughed out I'll go into those I'll go into those later in another video but you can, you can see I've made up a piece to uh, extend the, the the overhang of the uh, of the saddle and made up a new uh, a new back plate so that there's more room for it to mount up and I'll replace these these bolts which barely go in very far at all there's only a few turns on them with studs so uh, then we've you know we'll be using studs and shims there's, there's also discrepancies with this you can see this is uh, it's, it's probably you know a millimeter and a half two millimeters shy of even reaching the underside of the back way so it'll need to be shimmed um, the original back plate on the rear, same as the front, they're mounted loose just with bolts and they, um, and they actually mount them on an angle like, like so, just exaggerated, or <laughs> really not that much of an exaggeration, and mount them loosely and that's how they come from the factory. There's no packing, there's no shims, they just simply rely on the bolts to uh, hold them in position so they're just all over the shop when you slide it backwards and forwards and it's the same with the front plate 
I've seen other models of the front plate that have uh, that have grub screws that, are, that allow you to adjust the height and kind of get some sort of parallel stiffness, but this has nothing. There are only the three bolts, and once again, this front plate is mounted loosely, and it just sits on an angle, uh, sorry, an angle down that way, to uh, to reach the underside of the of the front way, which isn't parallel anyway. So overall, overall, really, really crap. Cheaply done, poor workmanship. The saving grace is all the all the ground surfaces are actually really good, which means we've just got to rework all the milled surfaces. Lots and lots of work. So uh, once I start lapping in these uh, these different surfaces, I will record that and let you guys know how it's going and show you the progress. And uh, wish me luck. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.